It was a beautiful day on the beach and the fishing was good. I caught one jack and a needle fish right off the beach. I cleaned my catch and threw the fish leftovers for the crabs and the seagulls to enjoy. A while after, I noticed a couple large red cushion starfish coming out of nowhere and moving toward the fish leftovers. Have you ever learned about starfish? Because if you haven't, you absolutely should. Besides their miraculous ability to regenerate their whole body just from a small piece after an attack, you'd be surprised at how this seemingly primitive sea creature without a brain, without a heart, without any blood, or even a centralized nervous system can show such complex behavior. I was curious, what would happen if I put the large fish head at the bottom of the sea? What would the sea star do with it? My curiosity got the best of me, so I conducted a small experiment. I always knew that starfish were omnivorous, quiet feeders. They feed on sea invertebrates, crustaceans, larvae, zooplankton, and seaweed. Isn't this fish head a little too large for them? It's hard to experiment in the open sea, as it's not a closed system like an aquarium, so I tied the fish head to a stone to prevent them from being thrown out by waves, and I waited. Echinoderms, generally, which includes starfish, are able to sense chemical and physical stimulation using sensory cells located on the surface of their bodies. When one of the arms first receives the signal that food is nearby, the whole body will start moving in that direction. Some of these cells have chemoreceptors that bind to molecules called pheromones. Individuals within a species secrete pheromones that bind to the receptors found on other individuals as a mean of communication or signaling. And this starfish communication is not fully studied or yet understood, but signaling plays an important role in reproduction, as well as when one starfish finds a good feeding spot, it can call others to come as well as distress signals, which are released from dying starfish to warn others. Even in parenting, starfish parents can signal to their larva to start metamorphosis when the environment is favorable. And believe it or not, starfish are able to see light and darkness and the movement of objects through their microscopic eyes called ocellus. Ocellus are located at the very tips of the arms. I didn't wait for long, the starfish can move quickly when needed, and to my surprise, the large fish head disappeared under the body of the starfish. But how are they eating such a large prey? How is it possible? Starfish feeding is a unique process. Starfish can feed outside of their body. They have a small mouth, so they cannot swallow large prey, but instead, it will evert its large cardiac stomach, which allows it to surround the food, and then digestive juices are excreted to break down the food. After that, small pieces of partially digested food is taken through the cardiac stomach into the pyloric stomach to be further broken down inside the body and completely absorbed. The tube feet are used to capture the prey, and the suckers are used to open the large shell of mollusks. The movement of these hundreds of tubes with suckers on each arm is not a result of muscular contractions, but because of the water vascular system of the starfish. This is a hydraulic system made up of a network of fluid-filled canals, and it's responsible for local motion, adhesion, food manipulation, and gas exchange. To move, they fill their arm with seawater and then use hydraulic pressure to make these hundreds of tube feet move forward and attach themselves to new locations. And this mechanism allows starfish to move much faster than you may think. Seawater is pumped throughout their body instead of blood, and it delivers key nutrients to the starfish, allows its organs to function properly. The use of water saves space as there is no need for a complex blood system. And also since seawater is highly abundant, they never seem to run out of it. Starfish maybe don't have blood or brain, but they're definitely intelligent creatures. Red cushion sea stars normally have five arms, but Rarely six, four, or seven armed species can be found. Adult red cushion sea stars generally have very few predators as they don't really look that appetizing to other animals. But for the Triton trumpet, red cushion sea stars are their primary prey. We found one and it probably followed our feeding experiment. 
Trumpet snails paralyze its prey with injections of toxic saliva and they bite through the body with its strong teeth. Adult trumpet snails are heavily collected for their beautiful shells, which has allowed sea star populations to proliferate recently. Conservation status for red cushion sea star is not evaluated, but harvesting Oryster reticulatus is illegal in some places, including Florida waters. Oh, <laughs>